they want to get people onto the table. They, they don't want this to be, at first at least, a fight against the insurers, a fight against uh, uh, the medical industry. They want the pharmaceutical industry. They want to get buy-in. I'm going to switch gears and get some groups in here. And Obama's advisors had told him that many of the lobbyists in the room were prepared to cut a deal. Karen Ignani is the chief lobbyist for the insurance industry. We entered this year being committed to change, being committed to restructuring, and committed to actually helping to get this done. We hear the American people about what's not working. We've taken that very seriously. You have our commitment to play, to contribute, and to help pass health care reform this year. Good. Thank, Thank you. you, Karen. That's good news. That's America's health insurance plans. Uh, this was really astonishing. Here she was on record saying, we're going to help you. And so, too, were the drug companies. Kenny wanted to be sure that she was at the White House representing the industry in the most, most positive way that she possibly could. It was part of the industry's charm offensive, as I call it. The um, industry knew that it was going to be under attack this year, or at least the legislation would, would focus very heavily on the insurance industry. And, and, you know, look, I mean, they, they could go tea leaves. You know, the saying in Washington was, uh, you can be at the table or you can be on the menu. Privately, Ignani was playing hardball. She said she'd support the bill only if everyone was required to buy health insurance. They said for the first time they would support universal coverage with one caveat, and that is that we have an individual mandate requiring people to buy insurance, so it's not just the... The, 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 the sick that buy insurance, but everybody. That was the quid pro quo. Obama had campaigned against the mandate. Ignani was insisting he reverse himself. They want to make sure that they get a requirement that all buy health insurance. They want to make sure that we are all forced to buy products from them. And they want to make sure that there's no alternative other than the private insurance market. That's why they're so adamantly opposed to the public option. Obama had also supported the public option, a government health plan. And Ignani wanted him to walk away from that, too. It is not uh, wiping out the private insurance industry. It's just creating a public insurance plan that would compete with private insurers. Um, but they wanted no part of that. Emanuel would keep Obama away from direct deal-making with Ignani. But with Tom Daschle gone, health care's most powerful advocate, Ted Kennedy, dying of cancer, the negotiations would have to be handled by that powerful chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, Max Baucus. Who do they get after losing Tom Daschle and largely Ted Kennedy, Max Baucus? Not the first choice of most of the people in the West Wing. He's not glamorous. He's one of the senior most senators. Very few Americans know anything about him. He's from Montana, a more conservative Democrat than a lot of the people in the White House, worked with the Bush administration on things like tax cuts and issues that are anathema to a lot of the liberal base. Cutting deals with health care industry groups was right down Max Baucus's alley. In 2008, during his re-election campaign, which is really when this debate began, he raised well over a million dollars only from the health insurance sector. That's a pretty astounding amount for somebody who's going to have a central role in this debate. In all, Bacchus received more than two and a half million dollars from special interest groups in the health industry. What the campaign conscience often do is that they open.